guy boom pin hi everyone if you can hear us see us feel us um let us know in the comment box that you are here with us and that we are coming through that's like that tommy track feel me mm -hmm. see me it's amazing how we still remember those words oh my god so many mm -hmm. so much what a show all right, everybody, welcome in. Again, if you... <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Just making sure we can uh, be heard okay, seen okay. Feel free to smash some hearts and likes. Let us know you're out there. Say hello. And uh, welcome in. We're excited to be with you for sure. Feels like... Uh, I don't know about you, but it feels like it's been a really, really tense few weeks for humanity. <laughs> Like everywhere I talk to, everyone I speak to, uh, maybe you guys can relate to this before we go into the training today, that there's just been a lot of uh, turbulence, obviously, the last few years, but it feels like a lot of stuff around people feeling unsupported, like uh, yeah. internal support, support from you know higher powers, just kind of this uh, churning inside. And then so if, if you can relate to that, say I in the chat box, um, noticing that with a lot of clients, noticing that with our sales team noticing that with my peers around us there's just been like a lot and i think we can all take a uh maybe we all take a little collective breath here together just kind of relax the nervous system a little bit and you know hopefully this is not too spiritual woo woo for you just recognizing that we're uh we're all floating through space at millions of hours uh, millions of miles per hour every single day flying through things that our, our, our scientists barely understand and cosmic radiation and all sorts of stuff that has an impact on our biology. Um, and that we just want to recognize that there's an impact. It's not always circumstantial. It's not always because you're challenged in what's going on in your life, although certainly it may manifest that way. Um, however, also recognizing that whatever is manifesting in your life right now, whatever you're dealing with is a manifestation of that energy as well. And that nothing is, you know, uh, there's this conversation to be had about whether um, they, they talk about this in the movie Interstellar. They have this really beautiful conversation about whether um, nature is inherently evil. And, you know, it's like, and they kind of have this conversation in a roundabout way. And um, one of the characters shares that it's terrifying, you know, severe weather, uh, animals and predators and prey and all that stuff, certainly terrifying, but not inherently evil. And recognizing that evolution, growth, and uh, the birth of consciousness itself or more conscious beings seems to be an integral part of this evolutionary process that we're in, right? Humans are not the apex. We're going to continue to evolve. I don't know about you guys. If you read headlines, they are finding all sorts of humanoids that they have no explanation for or can understand the DNA lineage of these things. We find temples all over this planet that are way older than the history we've been told. And so evolution has, has happened for a very long time, will continue to happen, whether or not humanity, this version of humanity is here to experience it. Um, and that this has always been a game of, of evolution towards something higher of a consciousness that recognizes itself. And we are in the midst and process of that. And so whatever is happening in your life, whatever stress is there, it, is serving that purpose. And I think that for me, I find comfort in that. Um, you know, say I, if you do as well, because it just... I can always lean into support, even when I can't see it in my, with my eyes, even when circumstantially, I'm sure that I have to do something, recognizing that there is this, there is this energetic thing happening. There is this biological evolution that's happening and I'm, and I'm part of it. I'm participating in it and how I choose to participate with that actually really matters, whether I go with it or whether I go against it. So just wanted to kind of start with that. Um, if you're brand new to our community, well, there's a lot of you. Uh, coming in here. Welcome in. Uh, I'm Guy. Other fellow over there in the darker room is Elon. Um, 
And we're excited to have you. This is a, a unique time in our history. It's a unique time to be in the position Elon and I are in to teach the things that we're teaching people. And I want you to know that whatever you're dealing with in your life, whatever issues you have going on, there are absolutely tools that we have here, things that we teach that are, are, are new to about 99.9% .9 of people that learn these things that can help you make significant headway in the way that you're experiencing them and can get you into that kind of participatory mindset and energy in your life where you start recognizing how beautiful all this and, and really a lot of the challenges mm. most of us are dealing with day in and day out are things that we have uh, carried with us as a burden from our past. And we want to really investigate with our, with our consciousness how to let go and unburden ourselves of those things or we will forever continue to create our past in our future because we have an expectation that things remain the same when everywhere in science and spirituality and anything else we look at, will tell you that nothing ever stays the same. Everything's always in flux and changing. And so there's in that same sentiment, you may want to recognize that the trauma that you're recreating in the present moment from your past <clears throat> is really at some level a responsibility in the choice that you're making, even if consciously you're not quite aware of what that is yet, that's okay. So I'm not blaming you for, for doing that. There is a mechanism uh, that everyone does that. And there's a reason we need to keep doing that so that we can learn from it until we understand how to let it go. And maybe the most challenging thing in life, even though it's the simplest thing, is also the most challenging thing. It's always this paradox of surrendering into whatever experience that you're having, because there's really, honestly, nothing else that you can do. Control is an illusion. You know, you can get in your car today and somebody else drives through a red light and that'll be that. Right. Like, so to the elements that we feel that we have control over, there is no more terrifying a time for a human being than the, than the feeling, the felt sense of a loss of control. However, the reality is, and, and by the way, when they um, survey people, the number one factor that people say that brings them joy or not joy is the sense of a sense of control. And so if we if we if we spend our lives focusing on what we can control as the only means to experience joy in our lives, we're going to experience a lot of disappointment because life is out of fucking control, <laughs> you know, and, and becoming inherently more out of control. And I think there's a reason for that too, because if you're going to take a consciousness and bring it to the brink and say, you got to learn surrender because in surrender is where all the support is, all the flow is, all the magic and majesty of life begins to happen. Then you got to bring people to a brink you know, in their experience in order to be like, you know what, I'm going to finally let go and just see what happens when I do. And most people have had some query with this in their lives and experienced it, but not as a, as a day to day. And it, the funny thing is when you find how to let go and surrender, you're like, yes, I finally did it. All this incredible stuff happens in your life. And then more stuff is coming. That's going to challenge you and bring you to your next brink. And again, maybe, maybe, in this moment, you can recognize that not as something that's trying to harm you, but instead something that's actually trying to support you towards a more enhanced evolutionary process of creating more liberation and freedom in your life. But if what's between you and feeling liberated and free is these experiences, then you got to go through those experiences. And what we talk about here, what we'll talk about today is about stress and anxiety and how to deal with that in a healthy way, because that's what everyone's dealing with day in and day out. However, if all you see is the stress and the anxiety and you don't have the mindset, you don't have the awareness and energy and stuff like that to recognize how to work with what's happening in your life, the, the end result generally is suffering. <clears throat> and in fact, dealing with those things in a really healthy way is the, your access to your liberation. And so for this is the choice that we all get to make when we're dealing with stressful situations in our lives is, is this going to make me suffer? Am I going to choose suffering today? Or am I going to participate in what's happening and use this as a means to liberate myself again into more freedom and more uh, expansiveness and spaciousness in my life to a more uh, higher state of well-being in my life. And that really is what's possible. We guarantee it, by the way. This is not a this is not a euphemism. You do the work that we talk about here. Your life is going to enhance. You are going to feel more liberated. It does not mean that you're not going to see challenges anymore. That would be bullshit. And anybody who is selling you that nonsense is, is full of shit. We've been around work for 20 straight years. We still deal with stressful situations. 
not everything in our life works out. There's still disappointment. There's heartbreak. There's challenges. There's crying. There's and there's also more beauty, more well-being, more laughter, uh, more connection, more safety. You know, more motivation, more inspiration, and so like it all comes together. You are not ever going to be in one side of your life. That's not how things work. We are holistic beings that experience all these things, and inherently there's pleasure in all of them. So if you're down for that ride, say I in the chat box, because that's what we're here for. And I got to tell you, we have some fucking incredible tools <laughs> that anybody can, can learn to do. The very, very simple tools that will, will help you in this evolutionary liberation process of evolving yourself into higher and higher states of consciousness and to enjoying your experience more, not because necessarily the circumstances change, but because simply where you look from, where you experience the world and love from changes. I just want you guys to get this. Most of us, when we're going through challenges, we inherently feel guilt and shame and blame within our systems. That's just kind of, it's an indicator of something not, not feeling in alignment, right? Inside of our systems. It's a, it's a type of language that our body speaks. that says, this is not in alignment for you. Okay. And that's where most people kind of just end like that's the shame they blame. And then they try to find, you know, circumstantially what's going on in their life. And so they want to get rid of these parts of themselves. When we are in stress and anxiety, it's like whatever shows up, we're like, we don't want that. I want to get rid of that. And so people start doing work to try to get rid of parts of themselves. And then they get in a war and a battle with these parts of themselves. They like some parts, very few, but they don't like most of the parts. They go, well, I got to get rid of all this shit. It doesn't work. Those parts are, in fact, if you do that, those parts get upset and take a, a stronger hold inside your system because they are afraid of being let go of. They are afraid for their existence, like as any part would be, as any piece of consciousness would be. They're afraid that their existence is going to end. And so we want to understand that the real work is becoming inclusive, is actually being whole, is not extricating parts of yourself. It's being whole. And so if you want to have a better life experience, then I'll, we'll start talking about today's topic. Ultimately, the key, as has always been, is love. And said another way is compassion, right? If you, can't, if you can't find a way to do work, which ultimately leads you to have con compassion for these parts, and I'm talking about shame and guilt and blame and stress and anxiety and worry and fear, you know, and all these things. If you can't find compassion for that, your life existence in general is way, way, way harder because not only are you feeling negativity within your own system and actually collapsing in your system, becoming more defended, you ultimately naturally become more defensive of the, against the world because it feels like the world is doing this to you. People are doing this to you. And so inherently your relationships degrade. Communication falls apart because now you're at war with everything. Because if you can't find compassion in here, when you see those attributes in the world and they are everywhere, you are going to be negative and discompassionate towards everybody around you. And I don't know about you, but when a person in my life does not feel passion towards me, I inherently don't want to go spend more time with them and, and build a stronger bond with them. I'm like, whoa, get that away from me. That's really intense over there. And that's where a lot of us live is we create our own trauma thinking it's being done to us when we're subconsciously sabotaging situations and, and circumstances and relationships in our lives going, they're doing it, but it's like, you're actually trying to prove your discompassion for yourself right in the world. Cause if there's no compassion over here, why would it be out there? Or then you keep trying to latch on to other people and say, Hey, it, I need to, you need to be compassionate towards me so I can feel compassion. It doesn't work that way. Our, our life, Everything is an inner game. And if you haven't figured that out yet, I'm proud to be the first person to tell you. We are in a time where looking at your circumstances outside of yourself to solve your problems, shit's gone. Ain't going to work. If you're waiting for something to change out there to make you feel safer, it's not going to happen. This is a time of intense intensity for our own evolutionary gain. And the change that humanity gets to make over the next few years and probably the next millennia is going from being an externally focused society to one that turns and looks within to understand that God state and everything we've ever been looking for and the resource and compassion and love and connection and experience of what you want lives within you. It has never been outside of you. And if you don't make that turn, you suffer. When you make that turn, you find ways to be responsible 
for your experience in ways that most people have yet to imagine. And that is the beginning of true liberation and experiencing life in a way that few have. Hope you enjoy that introduction. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, you know, with that, like, let's, uh, let's kind of talk about stress and anxiety. Uh, I haven't let Elon talk, so I'll let him do his, his part and uh, jump in here and talk. And then we'll, uh, we'll see where the conversation goes. We're happy to take your questions. We're excited mm -hmm. that you're here. And uh, let's see what unfolds today. So, um, you know, when people talk about stress and anxiety, I just want to give you guys a little bit of a map of, of what's actually happening physiologically in your energetic body and system that has you kind of deal with stress and anxiety in certain ways. Um, how many of you guys would say that you have some sort of coping mechanism that you use for dealing with stress and anxiety? And I'll just name a few and you guys can shout out if that's a yes for you. Um, but you come home and you need a drink, right? You need a glass of wine, you need that scotch or vodka, whatever, beer, whatever it is, right? That could be one coping mechanism. Another coping mechanism could be some sort of drugs, pharmaceutical drugs, right? Anything that kind of like takes the edge off um, could be one, right? Someone just said food. That could be a great one, right? Like relieve uh, food with that. Anger would not be, that would be a um, response That's to the stress, but not a coping mechanism. You don't cope with stress and anxiety by getting angry. So, um, you know, <laughs> what are the things like some people smoke weed, uh, exercise, go for a run, eat, whatever it might be. Um, these are all ways that we cope, right? We do those things. Um so now some, someone says, now I meditate and make tea, right? Like meditation and walking in nature, things like that. These are all obviously much, much healthier. Um, so yes, we all have them, right? Dale, and has, so, Dale has the best one. Dale has chosen the best path of sex and orgasms to cope with stress. <laughs> um, so here's what's basically happening to your system, okay? An outside input comes from the circumstance, a friend, a, a scenario, whatever it might be, right? And I want you to think of this happening as an energy, as a frequency, right? And that energy hits your system. It could be something that someone said, did, didn't say, didn't do, something you were expecting. It doesn't matter, right? That energy is going to hit your system, okay? And typically, it's going to hit a part of your system, okay? We all have kind of a part that worries maybe, um, we all have a part that thinks that we're not good enough. Uh, we all have a part that's embarrassed. We, you know, we're like, there's hundreds of these parts. So it's going to hit some part. And as the energy hits that part, it's actually going to activate it. When it gets activated, these are very, very old parts of you. Okay. Your response to stress and anxiety, just take a note of this is the response that you have to distress and anxiety, is it new? Or is it a very, very familiar response? Meaning like, you know this feeling very, very well, right? You know that feeling of not good enough. You know that feeling of uh, it's too much to handle, you know, whatever it might be, right? Like, you know it well. And if that's happening and this old part is being activated something that a lot of people don't talk about is as these parts get activated there's this other thing that comes online which we call a protector and the protector is trying to save you as it's always done for your entire life from actually feeling the pain or the discomfort that this little part inside of you has okay so the whole thing is basically one big defense strategy to try to avoid something that has been active inside of you for decades. That's literally what happened. So too much charge hits the system. Our system does not know how to handle it, or in this case, metabolize that energy. And it just goes into a fight, flight, or freeze scenario. And now you're fully, fully hijacked by what is actually happening in your system. 
Now, the reason that we all have coping mechanisms is because we had to create something growing up that would help us downregulate our systems and feel not overwhelmed or overcharged or whatever it might be. And so stress and overwhelm and anxiety are simply labels for a discomfort that is happening internally that you have been unable to heal. And so that's why it keeps getting activated time and time and time again. Now, how many of you guys have noticed that the things that stress you out the most keep showing up? Meaning it could be like, a stressful boss, right? And you're like, all right, I can't work here anymore. I have to leave. You leave, you find a new job. And the boss at that work place is pretty much the same exact type of boss, but maybe in a different skin suit. Or you're in a relationship and you get out of a relationship because you're like, I can't deal with this person, everything. Da, 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 da. Then you get into another relationship and it's like the same person over and over again. Or there are scenarios in your life that just keep showing up over and over and over, like these patterns that you can keep seeing over and over that keep activating the same part inside over and over and over. Okay. So most of you guys are there with me, right? Okay. Now think of what you have tried to do thus far in your life to alleviate this cyclical pattern. And I'd love to hear from you guys. Like what are the things that you have tried Right? Seminars, books, videos, right? You've probably delved into many, many personal development books and teachings and things like that, right? And the truth is that you're still dealing with many, as you guys have said, constantly dealing with many of these same symptoms, right? Same responses. So what I want to offer you is that the technology, the old technology of personal development really was good at, I'm just going to generalize here, but really good at one thing. Therapy, I'll, I'll get into in a second. But personal development was really good at one thing. And that is that it helped you manage these aspects of yourself. And what I mean by that is you got tools to manage your stress. You got tools to manage your anger. You got tools to manage your disappointment. All of these things. However, notice that all those impulses are still there. So if we learn to manage certain things, what we're not doing is we're actually not going into and healing those things. So we're not healing the root cause. It's the same thing of like, if you kept getting headaches and you just douse those headaches with pills and medication, right? It numbs the headache for a bit, but the headache keeps coming back because what you're treating is the symptom and not the actual root cause. Now, Guy and I did this for a span of 15 years. And what I tell people all the time, it's like what it felt like was this boomerang effect, right? Like I can throw the boomerang and it would take longer and longer and longer time periods for the boomerang to come back. But after 15 years of diligently and every day investing in myself and doing this work, what I came to the realization of is, and check in if this is accurate for yourself, the boomerang always came back. Maybe I extended the time frame from every day to a week and then to a month and then every six months. But the truth is, that the boomerang at some point always came back and hit me. And the longer the time frame between me throwing it and it actually hitting me, the longer that happened and then it hit me again eventually, the more disappointment and frustration I had in my life. How many of you guys can relate to that? Say I, that you really notice this like cyclical pattern and maybe you've managed yourself into like, having that thing not come back that often, but when it does, it really, really hurts. It's really upsetting when it does. How many of you guys can relate to that? 
Yeah. And while, uh, while you guys are answering that, I just want to go in, uh, someone said tons of therapy and yes, while tons of therapy is good therapy too, um, works in the realm of management and therapy loves this thing called labels, which gives you a label as to why you have stress or anxiety, a uh, label of like mom was this or dad was not that, or this is that right. And it gives you all these labels and what happens is people walk around and go like, oh, I'm this way because of this. But still not actually dealing with the root cause that has created that. And so the only way out of this cyclical, cyclical pattern is the following. You must heal the actual core cause of the overwhelm or the anxiety right? And instead of looking at overwhelm, stress, or anxiety as this thing that's like, oh my God, I have to get rid of, or oh my God, I have to manage, realize that that world, these labels, again, that we created, really what they're doing is these situations and circumstances in your life are simply highlighting for you internally, but you just don't want to see them, internally, the root cause every single time. Every time you're in one of these scenarios, basically what it's showing you, it's like, oh, there's that discomfort in your heart. There's that contraction in your stomach. There's that feeling of like wanting to puke a little bit on yourself. And because that painful is so old and because the body has programmed this notion that you can never feel that again, what you do is you touch it for a second and then you run away from it giving it all the other coping mechanisms, right? Like the, the, the drinking, the sex, the this, the that, the that, which in the moment does what? It numbs that sensation. And doesn't the sensation always come back? In fact, now you have to increase the dose of whatever your coping mechanism is. So it's like more weed, more drinking, more this, more that, right? To, to get the same effect because there's a law of diminishing returns as well. So what if you didn't have to do any of that? What if the thing that stressed you or made you anxious or whatever it might be, what if you can start to use that as a training tool to actually be able to find first and foremost, and then begin the process of healing that which keeps getting triggered over and over and over. And it's almost like uh, a visualization that I like is, it's almost like you're putting one of those child protective plugs into an electrical outlet. You know, like right now, every time the stress comes out, it's like you sticking a knife in that socket and you get zapped. Mm -hmm. But you can actually put one of those cute little plastic things in there. Then guess what? No one or no thing can actually go there and create that response in your system. And that is what we have dedicated the last six plus years of our development to learn. Because trust me, after 15 years of investing God knows how much time, money, and energy, the most depressing thing is realizing that you're still dealing with the same fucking shit that you dealt with when you started 15 years ago. It is demoralizing. And so the question was, okay, I'm done with that. Like, I am fucking done with that boomerang shit. Like, I'm, I can't can't do it anymore. If you take me one more time to this moment when I was three and I had this event and I have to review and look at it one more time to try to figure out why and what happened, I'm literally going to vomit on myself. And that's when things shifted because the focus became, I'm not interested in managing anymore. I'm not even interested in understanding anymore. I want to, I want to liberate and I want to heal these aspects of myself. And once you make that choice, your entire, the, the teachers that will show up, the situations and circumstances that will inspire you to grow and learn, everything will shift because your focus now is no longer on managing or understanding, which is the mind's game, by the way, managing, understanding, and it shifts more into healing and liberating. And that's when everything just shifts. Word to the big bird. So 
Yeah, let me actually just switch this around. One second. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna give you guys a demo. We're gonna start doing a lot more demos because we want you guys to get a sense of the this, the type of work and why this is different than everything else. Like we, we believe in mindset work. I always wanna give a disclaimer. Mindset work has enabled Elon and I to have much greater awareness over our lives, uh, to learn how to take responsibility, radical responsibility, because ultimately anything that has to change in your life has to start with your ability to recognize that there's something you get to take responsibility for, even if it's the smallest little bit, like responsibility for like breathing right now, <laughs> you, can, you can take responsibility for that, responsibility for recognizing that you are uh, negatively focused when you could be focusing on something that is working in your life. Like no one else can do that for you. Right. So if you're waiting for something like, you know, we got to start with something. And so, like, there are a lot of very important lessons to take from mindset development. We call that the growing up aspect of work. Elon's talking about the waking up aspect of work. And so we teach both. And if you, you know, choose to work with us at some point in time, you're going to learn both from us. Uh, ultimately, though, like Elon said, we know that healing is a experiential thing. Like for anybody who's done plant medicine work or, you know, has had those kind of works, you know, like you're feeling something. It's not just an idea that you had. You're having a direct experience. That direct experience is ultimately what's changing things in your life. And so we want to recognize, we want to start recognizing that the things that your mind has, has habitually done, the things you take action on, whether you want to or not, is a response to something. And that's what we want to demo for is like finding that, locating that response in the body. And then how do we work with that? Because what the mind is doing is, I, I say, I always say it's like a computer terminal that's watching everything, right? And the terminal has uh, programs that it runs when, when certain sensations are stimulated in the body, okay? Now, sensations in the body can be stimulated by our environment, certainly. If there's a, you know, a, a direct threat to you, a person about to punch you or, you know, to our ancestors, a, a cheetah running after them or whatever, saber-toothed tiger, like, you want to be stimulated, <laughs> You want, you want to know that something dangerous is coming and that you got to move, right? Like that's important. Uh, in our world today, though, we also want to recognize that not only is there external stimulus, there's also our thoughts and our ideas, the, the, the thoughts that we provocate over and over again. Science today believes that we loop about 95% of our thoughts are just looping thoughts. Mostly people just live with the worries that they've had their entire lives. And there's very little new things being generated in their system. And that's convenient and very efficient for our, our brain, by the way. It's like, I will deal with what I know how to deal with. And that's all I want to deal with. It's often why people are not open to new ideas. Like for those of you guys who've done personal development work, how is it going with your family doing that personal development work? Are they wide open to it and all your ideas? Or they're like, get away from me, you weirdo, right? Like usually it's get away from me, you little strange bird. Like we're going to, we're right here with our old thoughts and our old ways of doing things. And that can be very frustrating when you've begun to liberate your mind from old ideas. And so what we want to recognize is that the response that our mind is often churning out is really a response to stimulus that's inside your body. It's actually a felt sense. And we like to break down the word emotion into energy and motion. There's energy moving in your body. And if you're a misfit, by the way, you're in the perfect place. And you're not a misfit because you're a misfit. You're a misfit because you are breaking free of thousands of years of worth of tradition and thinking and doing things in a certain way. And of course, it's going to look strange. And that, again, is part of the evolutionary process. There are things that humanity had held on to as ideas, flat earth, center of the universe type of ideas for thousands of years that were simply not true. There are things like that in our society today that are simply not true and that science still doesn't understand, and that your doctor doesn't understand, and the medicine doesn't know. And it may seem like we have a good sense of control of things or know what's going on, but we don't. Hopefully COVID taught you that, right? So, so what the mind is really reacting to, not responding to, is stimulus inside of your body. And if we don't understand or learn how to become aware of that stimulus within our body, then we are literally giving away our autonomy to the programs that our brain has run and it's not like the brain is bad. The brain is just given a certain job and its job is to have you survive. And if you're here listening to me and Elon, then your brain's doing a good job because you've survived. So boom, congratulations, brain. You crushed it. Way to do so it. Far, so far, so good, right? But we do live in a structure of society. We are conscious, egotistical beings, selfish, and, and also selfless and all the things that humanity are, all the good and the bad that comes along with it. So brain, brain good, and you want to actually 
to start having a relationship with your brain, that brain good. Because if you go brain bad, you're fucked. Your brain doesn't like brain bad. Your brain is working very hard. Your brain is working very hard on your behalf and it doesn't sleep. You know, really, it, it is always functioning with, it, with the intention of benefiting you. And so if you say brain bad, your brain does what you do when you're told you're bad. It feels underappreciated and it digs in. Nothing works. Literally nothing works with standing in opposition of it. Nothing works. Look at all of society. Look within yourself. If you oppose what's happening, it just it's trench warfare. You're just stuck there. Okay. So what we want to recognize is if we actually want to heal, it's not about reconditioning the mind and going habit, 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 although that's certainly can be part of it. It's recognizing that in order to stop having a reactive mind and to start having a responsive type of experience, we want to work with the stimulus inside the body and learn how to metabolize and move that stimulus, energy in motion, right? We got, so what's happened? what happens when energy doesn't move? That stagnation of energy is what trauma is. It hits a part in the system that feels traumatized. The, the system contracts, gets tight around that energy, and it binds to it. It like holds on to it. And then the mind goes, uh oh, that doesn't feel good, and responds by running program. The same program it's run since you were a little boy or a little girl before you actually had any awareness or consciousness that it was doing these things. It just did them. And by the way, thank God that it did, because again, you survived those moments because it did it. Then you get older and you recognize that those programs aren't working anymore. They don't lead to success. They don't lead to happy relationships. But that's the only model you got. And how would you have even known any of this until you tested it in the real world? It's one thing when you're home with mom and dad, and that is your world when you're little. Because in that, that's what you're really learning to navigate. This is my home life. I'm trying to create safety here. Maybe dad was you know, uh, abusive or mom was abusive or whatever it might be. You had to learn how to cope and cr have safety in that moment. But then you get out in the world and you think everybody is abusive. And you perpetuate that reality for yourself because you have to put yourselves in situations where people abuse you so that the programs that you run are effective <laughs> when maybe nobody out in the world is really abusing you at all, but it will look that way to your brain. Cause that's how the brain has been conditioned. That's your conditioning. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want that conditioning throughout my entire life. Then everything is a reaction to a threat coming at you when there may be no threat at all. And today, biologically, we know whether there is a threat or a perceived threat, it's exactly the same. And that you will perpetuate that in your life. And so having said all that, the quote unquote mastery here, I don't want to say the cure, but the mastery here that we can ascertain is growing and building confidence in our ability to go into our system and learn how to navigate this stuck energy and how to work with it so that it can metabolize. When the energy metabolizes and the stimulus is gone, the nervous system down regulates itself and the brain, guess what, has nothing to be reactive to. And then you have spaciousness, you have ease, you have liberation, you have freedom. That's, that's the byproduct. You have this experience of, guess what, well-being. Yeah, you can actually feel well. It feels good to feel good, believe it or not. So how do we do this? Well, here's the weirdest part about this whole thing is the less you do, the better this happens. This should hopefully is a relieving statement to you. If you try to do too much here, nothing will happen at all. This, what we're talking about here, healing is a natural quality of awareness itself. I literally just watched a video over the weekend of some of the most prestigious minds in, in science today talking about the, the biological effects of meditation. And they concur, this is science research, and I can send the video around if anyone wants to see it, where they're like, if you just don't do anything, your body heals itself. <laughs> and I was funny because I was listening to these scientists who are researching this stuff and having data. And I love that we have data because for some people, they need that provided to them so they can start believing in something. Other people are just willing to take the leap, experience it themselves and have anecdotal evidence. I'm one of those people. I don't need a scientist to con concur in any of my experiences. I'm having my experience. I can tell I'm healing. <laughs> I can tell my clients are healing. I actually see biological effects in my life, things I've carried with me for 38 years disappearing in front of my eyes where I don't respond that way anymore to things that I've known myself to always respond to the same way my whole life. And suddenly I don't even have the inclination to respond that way. That's healing to me. I don't know about you, but that feels really freaking good. And I'm listening to these scientists and going, you know what, Elon and I, this is going to sound cocky, but like are more have more awareness around this than they do. 
because we're extremely practiced and have been around people who have taught this stuff generationally and who are thankfully passing this wisdom down to the rest of us. And, and, and Elon and I are very proud and very happy to be in a position to pass this on to others because of the absolute and definitive difference we know that it makes in the quality of people's lives. So before we go into the demo today, I want to let you know, if you're excited by what you're hearing here today, you're inspired, then what you want to do is you want to book a call with our team. And I'm going to tell you something about booking a call with our team. Don't waste our time. Don't waste our time. It's fine if you want resources. That's cool. We're happy to give them to you. Know that if you're going to get on this call, it's with the intention of looking at joining something that we do here, a program, a weekend, something. We don't really care what we push you. You know, it's not about pushing you into anything. It's like you're in this group. You saw, you saw something that we put out there. You, you opted in here. You're getting information from us. There's something going on in your life that if you're honest about it, probably you are curious at the very least about figuring out how to transform or shift that thing in your life. Is that not true? Tell me, tell me in the chat box if that's true. And if that's true, please recognize that unless you personally take responsibility for and take action upon that thing, that thing will not change. Sorry. Yeah, I'm tapping on my desk. Sorry. <laughs> that thing will not change unless you take responsibility for it and put something into action, whether with us or somebody else, that's on you, right? Like whether it feels good to work with us or not, that's on you. But like, if you don't take responsibility for that thing and take some action in accordance with making a change, then your present moment and what's in your future is going to be a replication of what's in your past. It's going to look, it's going to look similar, eerily similar. The characters may change, but the end results will look pretty much the same. Is that not true? And so recognize this is physics. If an object is moving at a certain pace and in a certain direction, it's going to keep doing that until something else intervenes. And for whatever you think about programs or investing money into a spiritual practice with yourself, I've never had an issue with that. Elon and I have invested over a million dollars of our personal capital into courses. So I've never had a conversation that money should be in the way of the quality of life that I want to live. If you have that conversation, that's on you. Again, something you can look at and take responsibility for and even transform. Because I promise you, it's not just showing up and looking at programs and saying, oh, well, I don't invest in this, but I'm going to go. You probably want to go to Costa Rica. You probably want to travel the world. You're not doing that shit either for the same reasons. Something needs to intervene to change that conversation. You grew up with that as a, a part of your conditioning because mom and dad told you that you have to work hard or money doesn't come easy or whatever the conversation is that are in society that keep people poor or poor. Something's got to change. You got to do something. You got to have new experiences with your being or your, your, pre, your past is your present. It's going to look the same. I've never seen it be that way for anybody else. 20 years of working with tens of thousands of people. That's the truth. That's the fucking truth. So here's the thing. You don't have to sign up for anything with us. You can come here every week and listen to Elon and I rant and rave about life and get whatever you get from it. That's fine. And if you, if you got here, our contention is you got here for a reason. There's something you're dealing with and you want to transform it. So if you're going to get on a call, get on the call with the intention of getting informed so that you can give your consent or not to going into an experience that's going to transform your life. And I'm telling you with absolute certainty and guarantee that if you do this work and apply it, your life in every way, shape, and form is going to transform. And the thing that you're most concerned with is going to transform quickly. That's going to actually be the easy thing. Okay. Like that, you're going to bring to the table, boom, gone, like transformed. It's going to be a different conversation, different experience there. It's all the things that you don't even know you're here for yet that are going to blow your mind. That's what's going to take you by surprise. That's why you're going to be like, holy shit, I had no fucking clue. It could be that amazing. And so that is really what's on offer here, guys. It's not, this is not a call about a program. This is a call about your life and transforming it. And again, for 20 years of doing this work, we could tell you with a lot of clarity that everyone who applies this work has extremely transformative experiences. And that's going to look different for everybody. Okay. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a pep talk. We're, we're, we're stepping into a new reality here. We're coming up to the end of the year. At the end of the year, you're going to do your little new year's resolutions. You're going to make promises to yourself that you're going to break two weeks later. And the only reason you would ever break those promises to yourself is because your programming tells you that you can't have that. You can't achieve that. You're not the type of person that makes that happen. Most people try to change their life out of willpower and they have to do that because the programming inside feels different. 
What if that programming was no longer there? Wouldn't it be easier then to build from an empty canvas than try to stick a bunch of stuff on top of a foundation that was built a very long time ago and has not been to your benefit? This work is about creating space so that you can manifest what you want from a spacious place without all the baggage and crap that people carry on their shoulders every single day. So if you are going to get on a call, get on a call with the intention to get clear that you're going to make a choice about whether or not you're going to transform your life today. Okay. So I'm going to do a little demo for you guys. Uh, Elon's going to be my, my assistant here. Um, and we want to give you an experience of two things. Number one of how you can, uh, begin transforming your mindset if you haven't already done that. And the second of all is how to uh, become aware in the same type of way, not of the mind, but of energy. And that second piece is what's really novel for most people because most people have zero training, Elon and my included. I, I, just a quick question here. How many of your parents talked to you guys about nervous system health growing up? Anybody? Mm -hmm. Yes or no in the chat box. Did mom and dad pull you over on a Friday before you went out and say, make sure you keep your nervous system nice and healthy. Anybody have that conversation with mom and dad? Anybody, mom and dad, ever talk to them about being energetically or emotionally attuned to one another? Anybody ever have that conversation with mom and dad? Is mom and dad like, oh, you, it feels like a family is out of attunement. Maybe we should syncopate today. Did anybody ever have that conversation with mom and dad? Okay. Did anybody ever uh, talk to you when you were being emotionally uh, vulnerable or expressing something big because you were so frustrated and pent up? Did they go, we should really go through this entire experience or they tell you to stop doing that, pick yourself up and just like, oh, don't worry. Everything is going to be just fine. When on the inside, it feels like everything is totally not fine. <sighs> Anybody ever do that? And then the other thing I want to ask you is, did any of that ever feel healthy? Okay. So real quick, there's two things we're going to demo here. Right. And this is just, these are just demos to honestly just awaken something within you and awareness within you. This is not the whole kit and caboodle. What, what Elon and I train on is not that it takes a long time to learn is that like anything else, like the, 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 the what we teach is super simple, alarmingly simple. Your mind will want to complicate it beyond what it is. But here's the truth. Again, I'm telling you from what the scientists are also confirming what spiritual spiritual science has known for thousands of years is that when you stop meddling with your shit, your shit resolves itself. You actually heal. But we have become conditioned to meddle. And so in order to retrain ourselves, we need to retrain ourselves to stop meddling. There is nothing you've ever done in your life. That wasn't simple. Bouncing a basketball is simple. Swinging a bat is simple. But why are there professionals that swing a bat or professionals that play music or basketball? We can all blow air into a flute. It's not going to sound like an orchestra flutist or you're not going to dribble the basketball like Steph Curry because you understand that slapping a ball with your hand makes the ball bounce. Bounce good. He can do things that I, even though I can bounce the ball, I can't do, I'm not trained to do them. And I've not taken the time to train myself to do them. So if you think about it this way, Elon and I have been bouncing the basketball of spirituality for 20 years, nonstop, every single day. You might be at day one of learning how to bounce the basketball. You can still bounce the basketball, but you can't bounce it like me and Elon. I'm sorry. There is, there is a delta, a gap of time and, and desire that we've invested to learn how to nuance, do certain things, like recognize certain things that somebody that's just starting has not. And so transforming your life is not a weekend retreat. It's just not. That's silly if you think that way. And if that's your expectation here, then I don't know, go somewhere else where somebody's promising you that in two days, everything's going to change. It's ridiculous. Becoming any certain way is a, is a pursuit a daily pursuit or a weekly pursuit. It has to have some kind of time and energy and resource commitment to do that. Okay. So check this out. First thing I want you to do or pay attention to is that your voice, your, your brain is producing thoughts. Okay. And just take a few, take a few moments to recognize that one of the functions that your brain has is to produce a narrative thought. Those thoughts are generally having to do with some form of judgment. You might even be judging me and Elon based on how we look, the colors that we're wearing, and it's something like, do I like this? Do I not like this? Is this good? Is this bad? Is this right? Is this wrong? And it's doing it all the time and nonstop. You can't stop it. And stop trying to stop it. Just recognize it for what it is. 
So notice that there's a little, little narrative voice inside your head. And if you're wondering if there's a little voice in your head going, what narrative little voice inside my head, the voice that just said that is the voice I want you to notice. So take a minute and just listen. How many of you guys can hear the little voice inside your head? Interesting, yeah. Trudy's saying, I first learned of this change, which religion calls sanctification. I'll definitely look that up, Trudy. All right. Some of these lessons are certainly thrown into our religions, and many of them have actually been pulled out of the teachings, unfortunately, because these are spiritual, mystical type of direct experience trainings. Cool. So if you can hear the little voice inside your head, what I want you to recognize in this moment is that you are not producing those thoughts. Yeah, somebody just said, I told her to shut up. How can you tell a little voice to shut up if you are the little voice? <laughs> recognize that you are not the voice or producing the thoughts that the voice is having. You are actually the awareness that listens to the voice. And see if you can recognize that. You can't even track where the thought has come from. It just, it seems like there's nothingness and then it just appears. Yeah. So I'm saying I can separate myself. So what we want to recognize in this moment, this is what we call the subtle mind awareness. You're becoming subtly aware of the mind is that there is a mind. It has a function. Its function is based on survival. And we are the awareness that sits behind and listens where most people have trauma is that they merge with the thoughts and believe that they are the thought and they are the generator of the thought. And because they have no separation between the two, they act upon the thought as if it's real, when in fact, it's just a mechanism. If you get this one little piece that I just shared with you, your life will transform. Now, catching this little voice is not always so easy. Because when we're in an experience, it feels extremely real. Just like when you stick a pair of virtual reality sunglasses on your face, it messes with your sensations and how you perceive reality. And it can feel very real. If something in virtual reality space is being thrown at your head, you're going to duck. It's not real, but you're going to duck as if it's real. Same thing here. When you merge with the voice, what it's saying is like a virtual reality experience that becomes real. And so this is a practice for you guys who are saying it's not easy is to begin to listen to this little voice inside your head and start recognizing this is not me. It's a mechanism. It plays a role and I can listen. And the way that this serves you is that it can give you a gap between being, being reactive and being responsive. If you just listen to it, you'll notice that the, the voice comes and then it goes and it changes. And it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a person who's got schizophrenia or is like hyper reactive and it's just blurting things out, blurting things out, blurting things out. And again, many people's pain in their life is because they think that they are this voice. You are not this voice. And something we say is you don't have to, uh, you can recognize a bus when it's driving by, but most people don't recognize that the bus is driving by. They actually get on it and they go for a ride. When you listen to the voice, that's what it's like. You've gone for the ride. And by recognizing that you're on a ride will immediately take you off the ride as well, by the way. There's no effort involved with that. Just recognizing, oh, shit, I've gone for a ride with a little voice in my head. Now I can get off the ride. And okay? the key is not to get yourself wrong. Yeah. Everybody's doing this. You're not, you're not by yourself. Everyone's got crazy shit going through their head, judgments, assessments of others and themselves. It's, it's generally speaking, rather discompassionate. What is coming from this voice? With training, it actually becomes a bit more, it can become quite a bit more compassion, compassionate towards you. Okay. That's step number one. That's more in the realm of growing up work. Now I want to take you into the deeper work with Elon and myself, which is awareness of energy. So if you wouldn't mind playing along, you're going to put up your right hand like this. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to not look at your hand. You can close your eyes because it's going to be helpful. Elon and I are a little bit more trained so we can keep our eyes open while meditating. But we're going to do like a very simple kind of awareness meditation, mindfulness exercise here. So you're closing your eyes and not, not looking at your hand, putting your awareness on your hand. As you put awareness on hand, what do you start noticing about your hand? I'm going to just make some offerings here because we've done this with quite a few people. Generally speaking, people say, I feel a warmth, a pulsation, a vibration, sometimes a cooling, you know, um, yeah, anything like that. 
And what I'm looking for is, do you feel more sensation? Yeah, so Dale's saying it's tingling. Dale, so uh, do you feel more sensation in your hand when you place awareness on your hand? Yes or no? Just say in the comment box so I know you're tracking me. I'll give you guys like 20 seconds to answer. And participate in this, guys. This is life-altering stuff. You, mean, you don't even know it yet. It's really simple. This, is, this can change your entire life. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Anybody else? Yes, yes. Pulsing. Beautiful. Okay. Why did so let's 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 anecdotally prove this to ourselves that this is not a party trick. Put up your left hand now and put awareness on the left hand. Again, close your eyes if that's helpful. And I want you to notice again if you're noticing more sensation in your left hand, however you name it, heat, cold, pulse, vibration. Those are just words that we're using, but I'm lo really looking for this generalized increased sense of sensation. And then again, notice really quick, you start feeling more sensation in your left hand. Is that correct? Yes or no? Look in the chat box because I want you to know that you're not the only crazy one. This is actually works for everybody. You are the crazy one. You are. Welcome to your blue pill or red pill or whatever pill pulls you out of the fucking matrix. Beautiful. Check it out. Yuppies, yuppies. Yes, yes, yes. So look, you're not the only one. Other people are experiencing this too. We've never done this demo where a person said no, by the way. Okay. This has a hundred percent conversion rate. So close your eyes again. No, same thing. Just so you prove to yourself, it's not a party trick. You move it, move your awareness towards your left foot. And then again, within a few seconds, notice if you feel more sensation in your left foot, you can even play with it. Don't just go to the foot, go to your big, big left toe. Put the awareness right at the tip of the left toe and tell me if you notice more sensation right at the tip of the left toe. It's going to be very granular. You can go down to like a micron with this awareness and just feel it in one little spot on your foot, inside, outside, mm. more sensation. So check it out. Yes, yes, yes. High foot all across the board. More sensation in the foot. Now, a few things to recognize about this little demo. Number one, I did not tell you how to use your awareness. Did I tell anybody here how to use their awareness? And was anybody mystified on how to do that? Didn't you immediately know what to do? Hmm. I wonder why that is. Did anybody need directions on how to use their awareness? Anybody? Whether you're a meditator or not, doesn't matter. I want you to get that what, what you just did was innate and natural and you immediately knew how to do it without any direction. Uh, you could say instinct. I think that's that's a fair answer. It's just, it's innate. There's nobody that doesn't know how to use their awareness. If I told you to put your awareness on your spouse, your child, or loved one, or a family member, couldn't you do that right now? And isn't it instantaneous? Notice that there's no time dilation between a request and where your awareness can go. It is free of space. It is free of time. It is an instant orientation or resting into some space. <laughs> so that's the first thing we want to recognize is that everyone can do this. There is a thing called energetic signaling that every animal on planet earth does. Yes, you are an animal, even if you like to think of yourself as separate than nature. And so the ways that humans communicate in the most powerful way, what do they say that 80 or 90% of all human communication is nonverbal? Yeah, this is true. When you're upset with a spouse, there's a feeling to it, is it not? When you attune to your kids, there's a feeling to it, is it not? When a child is born into this world, they don't speak words yet, but they feel and they respond and react to their environment. Do they not? Energetic signaling. Just because you grew up doesn't mean that stopped. It just means you started using logic and language and linearity to think through your life instead of using the most powerful tool you have which is the senses in your body, which really tell you what's going on and whether you like or dislike something. The narrative that comes after it has been shaped by your conditioning and is not what is happening. That's an opinion that your mind has based on the, the view that it got when it was a kid and how you got conditioned. That's not what's happening. What's happening is you have sensation in your body, full stop. Anything beyond that, you make it up. I get that that might be challenging to hear if you're dealing with some circumstances, by the way. So how is this useful? So first of all, I want you to get that what you've just done right now is, is, is an enhanced version of 
the way that the mind can perceive things. And most of humanity has not experienced what you just experienced. <laughs> not yet anyway. Just that little bit. Just like before we created subtle mind awareness, what you just did there is created subtle energy awareness in the body. You became aware that you focusing your intention and awareness has an energetic biological effect on your body. That's what we just did in that little experiment there. Okay. The way this is useful is there's always something stimulating your body and the quality and view of this awareness when, when learned how to be used can elicit what I said before, which is you no longer have to be stuck with the energy in the body by learning how to uh, use this awareness and resting on it and where there's stimulus and sensation in the body, especially when there's discomfort. Someone mentioned panic attack before. Yep, that has a stimulus clearly in the body, a sensation. Um, and I believe the panic attacks and, you know, like midlife crises that people deal with around the age of late 30s, early 40s is really just kind of like a buildup, like plaque on the teeth. It's a buildup of energy in the body that's has stagnated. And so it's like piling up and piling up and piling up. And eventually the system can't hold on to all that, all that energy. And so it starts being expressed and it feels terrible because the body can't hold all the things that have been pushed down into anymore. There's only so much like storage capacity in the body. And so it starts becoming these extraordinarily um, big waves of, of very uncomfortable sensations. But the truth is, is that there's discomfort in your body now for a very, very long time and it hasn't metabolized. And so what happens with awareness is that when we place it on stimulus in the body, it enables your body to begin to metabolize that energy. That's how uh, I would say in spiritual speak. In science speak, I would say you're downregulating your nervous system. You're bringing yourself to a rest and digest state. Notice resting and digesting. Digesting meaning to metabolize. That's what digesting is. To metabolize energy that is creating a hyper reactivity in your nervous system. And the benefit of this is the energy leaves. You are left with a more relaxed nervous system. Um, and then the mind doesn't have to be overreactive to what's happening. And eventually, as you continue to do repetitions of this, the mind will just be like, oh, I don't have to react anymore. And so that, re that conditioning that the mind has will actually undo itself. You don't have to even have an intention to do that. It just the brain is efficient. It wants to use energy and it's time efficiently. If it doesn't need to do something because you're not rehabituating it in your life regularly, it will just stop doing that and it will create other neurology and other neurokinetics in there. Okay. And so this is guys, I'm telling you tip of the iceberg, tip of the iceberg exercise in recognizing this with ourselves. When you start doing this with other people, and the type of ways that we sit in our community. And it's one of the most powerful things. If you decide, if you choose to talk to our team, and again, please don't waste their time. And you do decide to come and do this experience. What we have established is a worldwide community of people who are practicing and in this awareness. And you will not believe how fast and how quickly you can move through your transformation when you have sat with somebody whose nervous system is already trained and their awareness and energy is already trained to find stability and ground and safety and well-being. And like I said, we are all energetically signaling. And so what happens when you're sitting with a healthy system who's energetically attuned? It's like putting one instrument next to each other. One is misattuned and one is attuned. Could you tune this instrument faster when this instrument is tuned? That's how it's done. You've ever heard two guitarists? One is a tuned guitar. They keep playing the string and then the other person changes the tuning until the, the tonality sounds the same, until the frequency and pitch is the same. That's how humans work too. It's just a frequency. It's a pitch. So when you sit with another system that has been tuned, you can tune faster. What took Elon and me 15 years is taking our students less than a year sometimes. So even if it took you a year or two of investment of your time, your resources to have a tuned system where instead of having to deal with every life circumstance as a crisis, and instead you had built the confidence within yourself that you know how to face it, not because you're a warrior and I know how to deal with everything. That's like how you let me deal with everything, like two angry fucking ogres our whole lives. Instead, yeah. Instead, you just had the capacity to know, oh, if that energy hits my body, I know how to metabolize it. I, my mind won't become reactive. It's actually every time you stimulate it, it's like, oh, good. Another opportunity to be more liberated. Not, oh, shit, another experience I don't want. And that's the change. 
everybody gets to make. If you want to have this transformative experience, please talk to our team. You can go to callsatori.com, C-A-L-L-S-A-T-O-R-I.com. It will take you right to their calendars to book your call and then have a conversation with them. Tell them what's going on in your life. We will tell you what our programs involve, time, money, resource, commitment. It's pretty, pretty fractional, all told. And I really want to reiterate, if you do not do something, whether with us or somebody else, to intervene with what's been going on in your life for your entire life, and only you can get honest about that. Has this been happening most of my life? Yeah. Then chances are that's going to continue to happen until some kind of intervention happens. So I hope you make that choice. We look forward to uh, welcoming you guys into our programs, into showing you what we got, and into how quickly your life really can transform with just very, very, very simple practices and what it's like to sit inside of a healing community that is nurturing each other, is there for each other. And that's probably one of the biggest benefits of anything that we offer here is a global community of people doing this work together who, are, who could show up for each other on a regular basis. Okay. Thank you for your time, your attention today. We love you very much. We will see you next Tuesday. And uh, yeah, complete over right there. Bye, everybody.